dark side. Open that side. Resident Evil Death Island. And yes, I have Jill Valentine emblazoned on my chest. That woman is the reason why I do love Resident Evil. But having said that, actually, I am going to make a separate Resident Evil video in the future, actually. I can't wait to do that. But when I was at the cinema yesterday and I just finished watching The Bike Riders with Austin Butler, Tom Hardy, and the lovely Judy Kermer from Liverpool, who does an amazing Milwaukee accent in that movie, by the way, well, I got alerted by my old neighbor that there was a package waiting for me from Amazon. And I thought, well, hang on a second. I'm pretty sure I changed all my address details last year. So I went there, picked up the package, got home, and this beauty was waiting for me right here. Yes, the beauty with the booty is Jill Valentine sandwiched between Chris Redfield and a very funny Leon S. Kennedy. You could say it's the perfect Jill sandwich. Oh, and those 4K boobs. So the reason why I bring this to your attention, uh, this is on my Amazon wish list, or it was. My wish list appears on my channel description of Kung Fu Hot Dog. And whoever bought this for me is obviously a subscriber. You don't have to come forth. You don't have to send me an email to say it with me, the one armed man or woman. I just want to say thank you very much. Uh, this cheered me up a lot this morning when I watched it. I had so many great special features on this as well. You can only buy it in the USA too. There is no steelbook edition as far as I know that's available in the UK. So, and in fact, when this film was released last year, all these copies were pre-ordered, so I couldn't get my copy in the end. I thought, you know what? I'll wait a while. I'm sure they'll be back on the market again. And so it appeared. Now I've got it in protective packaging right here. So, you know, my, even my mum was like, oh, what's Resident Evil Death I I'm like, mum, trust me, you don't want to watch it, but it's a, it's a ton of fun. It's absolutely great. And it's probably my favorite of the animated films already. I've got them all anyway. I'm a massive Resident Evil fan. I absolutely am. So just, and I'm kind of interested in collecting a lot more memorabilia for these things now. There is something else I'm going to add on my wish list and it's something that's really hard to get hold of. So I'm just going to put it out there, whistle Dixie and see what happens for the rest of that. But again, whichever subscriber bought this for me, uh, you are the best and my audience is the best. And man, what more can I say? But without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let's get into today's video. Now, Leslie Headland, the woman that wears the headband, whose own wife appeared as the wife of this insufferable character right here, Miss Queen Anasia, played by We Don't Give a Shit. Well, Leslie Headland has gone on the rampage again because now she's getting a lot of blowback, a lot of pressure to clarify her stance on the queer nature of Star Wars, the acolyte. <clears throat> She says critics who describe it as a witch coven of lesbians, I believe I'm one of those critics by the way, are not really paying attention. Are you sure Leslie? Because I'm pretty sure from where I'm sitting, us guys and gals, we are paying a lot of attention to the shit show that is The Acolyte, which as I speak at this time of recording is at a whopping all time low of 14% on RottenTomatoes.com. Those figures cannot lie. This is the worst statement, by the way, I have ever seen. The most important piece of art that I've ever made. Don't you mean fart, Leslie? Because from where I'm sitting, I can smell the farts oozing through my PC right away. The mere mention of the acolyte and steam starts appearing. I mean, why would that happen? Good God, woman. Get a grip on yourself. Despite the term being perfectly apt to describe them, the acolyte showrunner Leslie Headband 
believes that everyone labeling the members of her newly canonized, <laughs> more like cannibalized, all female space witch coven as lesbians is not actually paying attention to her story. What story would that be, Leslie? How the patriarchy are dog shit and that women have ruled the galaxy far, far away where canon characters have said things that are not true, like the Jedi's not existing of thousands of years before this iteration of Star Wars. I carried them, I created them. I'm sure you did by immaculate conception, ladies and gentlemen. You don't need a man in Star Wars to impregnate you, ladies. You can just use the power of the Force and the Metachlorians to help you birth babies. You did this to me, you miserable piece of dick brain horseshit slime sucking son of a whore the embattled showrunner and former assistant to dun, 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 Harvey Weinstein, come on down. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey Weinstein. Harvey and Bob. And Harvey and Bob Weinstein. Offered her thoughts on the criticism level towards her entry, more like the back entry of Star Wars, while speaking to the Hollywood reporters, Brian Davids following the airing of the series fourth episode called Day, beginning their time together by reflecting on the backlash of her previous interview with the raps, Drew Taylor. Drew Taylor, yes, the man who called this version of Star Wars the gayest thing he's ever seen so far. So you know what's on his agenda, right? You know very well he wanted this very straight franchise to be turned his whimsical, musical way. And how's that going for you so far, Mr. Taylor? Sorry, Mrs. Taylor. Not very well, is it? Again, you sat there, you encouraged Amanda Stenberg and Miss Headband to disparage, to put down, to shoot George Lucas in the foot. His foot filled with gout at the moment because this is the version of Star Wars you want to see. You might have been huffing, you might have been puffing, you might have been laughing and rollicking with laughter, smelling your own farts during that interview, but nobody else found that funny. Nobody. In fact, if anything, you've given us more reason to make videos like this and to ridicule the living shit out of you. I want to ask you both because this is, I would say, arguably the gayest Star Wars, I think, by a considerable <laughs> margin. And uh, are you excited no. about that? Are you Not bracing the yourself? Star Wars. Not the gayest Star Wars. That's pretty gay, let's up. be honest. And Mandela and I burst out laughing because that's our knee jerk reaction. You mean it wasn't pre rehearsed? But to be honest, I don't know what the term gay means in that sense. Well, gay in the old 1930s and 40s was just having a gay old time. You know, here I am. Then it obviously took on a bigger meaning much, much later on. She clarified, I don't believe that I've created queer with the capital Q content. Now, what I think she means by that is that she's claiming that there is queer content in Star Wars, but it's not being projected with it's not like the focus of everything so if it was with a capital q i'm assuming you would see a lot more of it it's like you'll see in the background signs or somewhere else maybe hidden somewhere on a spaceship you know it could be that um but again if she's proud to be a gay woman herself she almost feels a little bit ashamed here by clarifying his point about well it doesn't have a capital q in the title otherwise it would be queer wars or Star Wars, or yeah, do you see what I'm going at? It's so strange. That's she could be referring to the the yeah the Aqua Light, the Aqua Light. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows at this stage? From there, David's then pressed Headland for insight into the recent third episode introduction of the aforementioned able to create life from the Force lesbian space witch coven. In turn, the showrunner explained. They're in a matriarchal society. As a gay woman, I knew it would read their sexuality is queer, but there also aren't any men in their community. See all that Marxist messaging coming out through there? So a closeness between the two of them would be natural. It seemed plot driven. No, when two women who might not be the same sexuality are close together, they could end up tearing each other's eyes out.
I guess you don't watch reality TV shows, Leslie, to get a feel of that, even though for the most part those kind of shows are staged. I would say it's really reductive to call them lesbians. She pushed back further. I think it means that you're not really paying attention to this very important chapter in the Star Wars story. Holy shit. However, despite her rejection of this, of the witch or the bitch oven in the coven, Hedlund made sure to note that she was proud of being a gay woman who's accomplished his feat. <laughs> and certainly, she continued, if my content is called queer, I don't want to disown whether queerness is in the show. I would be proud to create something to inspire queer people. <laughs> You'll get certain country western singers like Shania Twain, who's famously straight, who has a big band of queer followers. Kylie Minogue does the same thing as well. Doesn't make them queer, does it? So where is she coming off that if I make a queer piece of entertainment, it's going to really resonate with my gay crowd. Oh my God. Can this month of June please end soon? It's just taking like the longest time ever. <laughs> And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, let's not forget that Miss Stenberg hijacked a recording studio and took over for the entire day mixing, remixing, remuxing this song, which she says took three hours to write, produce, and force a poor producer to sit behind the mixing desk and deliver us from evil this absolute garbage shit show of a song and a video, which by the way, if you dare to criticize, and the reason why Miss Stenberg made this video, it was a retaliation for everybody who hated the Acolyte. With good reason from the Star Wars fans' perspective, by the way, I may add. But on that one, ladies and gentlemen, oh my god, was that the biggest pile of garbage and cringe you've ever read? Yes, I felt the same way too. Just like Martika, I felt the earth move under my feet. I feel the sky tumbling down, tumbling down. I know what you're going to say, but it was Carol King who originally sang that amazing song. And I met Martika back in the, ooh, 1991. And uh, her and I almost went out on a date. But that is another story for another time. And on that one, ladies and gentlemen, if you were me and if I were you, you should go back and watch my previous videos and then I'll catch you catching me catching you on my next upload.